Hello, Brian, and welcome back to Japan by River Cruise. I'm Bobby Judo. And I'm Oli Horn. And joining us this week for his third time on board is firefighter Derek Westman. The firefighting community, of course, famous for its close ties to the river community, because as that old Japanese proverb tells us, rivers are nature's hoses. Derek, thanks for coming back. It's good to be on again. Don't feel uh, like you have to uh, mute your mic when you laugh. We don't mind. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm still trying to figure things out here. <laughs> We always we always love it when our guests go out of their way to make it sound like we're not funny. <laughs> On this week's show, Japan needs a new prime minister. Derek, as a former aide in the Japanese diet, will help us sort through who in the LDP has the experience, the qualifications, and the integrity to step up and lose the job to Kono Taro. Plus, Ali's got your weekly river cruise recommendation. Ali? Yeah, it's just occurred to me that an aide to the Japanese diet is, must be something like miso paste. Uh, so my my recommend you can you Derek you are allowed to laugh at the funny things we say. Uh, yeah, yeah, I will. <laughs> anyway, yes, this week's recommendation is a hardware recommendation. Following the special event last Tuesday, the most innovative cruise company equipment manufacturer in the world, based in Cupertino, has announced what their teams of hundreds and hundreds of talented people have spent the last twelve months working on. This year, it's a marginally bigger boat with a slightly better camera. Also, the best <laughs> fashions for a fall river cruise. How will your autumn boat rides be affected by koromo gae, the seasonal Japanese tradition of giving foreigners shit for wearing a t-shirt even though it's still 28 degrees outside. All that coming up, but first, Soap Talk. <laughs> Uh, yesterday, Brian and I had a long, long talk while we were doing our tell steps. Um, and if you don't mind me sharing, Brian, it would be my pleasure. Uh, you said that you were a little concerned that because you're always participating in the show, especially because of the very specific way in which you participate in the show, it might seem like you're always on board with our various opinions, which is not necessarily the case. So you wanted it to be made known that when you're being silent, sometimes that's because you feel like you couldn't possibly put it any better than we have, and other times you're biting your tongue because you disagree. Does that, does that about sum it up? Brian, I think this speaks volumes. <laughs> We're very glad to have Derek on this week, aren't we, Bobby? Despite the fact that we both tried very hard to not have him on. Yes, Derek, we always love having you on. You are informative, you're funny, you're great to talk to, you're an excellent guest, and we did everything that we could to not have you on again this week. Nobody worked harder than me to stay off. <laughs> <laughs> but here we not, are. What's interesting, not many people have the confidence to talk about what we want to talk about this week. Mm. We've got a surprising number of people who I don't think they want to they want to either place bets or burn bridges. Can you can you enlighten me on that? Like what kind of people are you asking and and, and what are they saying? What are they saying to 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 let you down easy? Well, so we we always look for Japanese voices first and foremost. Um I mean, it goes without saying that our our priority in booking is to try to not have another white guy on because we've already got two of them. And also, but they're good right. ones, right? If you've got two good white guys, then keep them, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we look for Japanese people. Um, Diminishing returns. And there's a couple of Japanese uh, journalists uh, that we've reached out to on Twitter in a, in a couple of different ways that we've had like mutuals uh, reach out to directly. And we've just been kind of like blanket ignored. And I, I don't know if it's because it's not getting through or if it's just because we're not a good fit or or what it is. But like I, I think trying to, even if you're a Japanese person who writes about politics in English, it's a very different thing to have to talk about it um, out loud with your voice and also do so yeah. in, a, with, in like a comedy setting. No, absolutely. I think that makes sense. And also more specifically, straight up told I was told by someone that they uh, they don't have enough of a handle that they, they, they were an expert in japan politics but they don't have enough of a handle on what, what on earth's going on in the ldp now yeah we had a couple people say uh get back to me when you want to talk about the opposition but uh, not the ldp so i mean i think um there's a dunning kruger effect here right um the person who doesn't know that much is totally willing to talk about it so <laughs> that's what we have <laughs> well here. welcome derek typical typical yeah. white guy confidence yeah I, I like how ali you you mentioned that a lot of people don't have the confidence and and didn't say a lot of people don't have the competence that's not one of the things we check for <laughs> no yeah, exactly, thank God. exactly if you if you if you say that you could talk about an issue 
and if you've managed to persuade a publisher that you can write a book on it, you're on. Sounds very Twitter to me. <laughs> All of this sounds very Twitter. <laughs> but do you do you like commentating, Derek? Does it does it interest you to? Because what I've noticed about your Twitter, right, is you you have a. I think you'll admit you got quite an odd following, right? Like you've got people that that kind of idolize some really trivial stuff that you do. Like, by trivial, I don't mean it's like what you I mean. Son is, of a in bitch. The grand of things. I, hey, no, hey, 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 hey! How dare you besmirch Derek's daily pictures of ginkgo trees and moss? Exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. It's moss. It's 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 lunch. It's, it's oh, like yeah. it, it's stuff which people will. Otherwise, like, <laughs> otherwise satirize Twitter about. Like, Do you oh, want to look behind the curtains? Well, if, you, if you haven't yeah. seen, yeah. if you're listening and you haven't seen Derek's Twitter feed, uh, I am not exaggerating <laughs> when I'm referencing Ginkgo Leaf Watch Day 265. No, yeah. we're on 178. D Play Derek that back. Started a hashtag about, <laughs> Derek Sorry. started a hashtag about benches. My point is, <laughs> That's you've, true. you've, 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 you've <laughs> <laughs> the, the stuff you do on Twitter is so, like, you know, kind of tittle tattle. Like, do you actually, you know, because you could, you could do super long threads about your your thoughts on this kind of stuff. Well, he does. Yeah, here's what he I does. do. You, every yeah, you every don't. every four to six months, I do a big Japanese politics or some other kind of in depth, you know, um, into the weeds Japan subject, and then I I always garner a bunch of new followers from that. And then I just barrage them with lunch photos. For and, the next pictures six months. Yeah. <laughs> and pictures of your cat. Yeah. And pictures of my right, cat. Okay. And and just super stupid jokes. Here's the thing. Like I I got into Twitter at one point on Twitter I was like, I'm gonna help people understand. <laughs> and 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 that just didn't work. So Yeah. Um what I've done is I've realized Twitter is the the best thing I, from my perspective, Twitter is for is positivity. So I'm just positive on there. I'm glad to hear that somebody on Twitter is enjoying it. And in the spirit of positivity and gratitude, uh, let's uh, say thanks to our coffee donors. Uh, we had some anonymous coffee, so thank you very much for that. Hey, even if we don't know who you are, we'll still drink them. Uh, and we had some more donations uh, to our Tell campaign as well, uh, which I did. I did my uh, did my walk. Did my didn't quite get to ten thousand steps because I misjudged the route, but I uh, I, I did it. Uh, hey, guess what? Going for an hour and a half long walk is quite a nice thing to do. Who would have thought it? So uh, people that supported that include uh, Selena Hoy, who wants proof of how many steps the cat walked. Uh, funny story on the cat. She absolutely didn't want to come today. I think she might have started um, getting horny like my other cat did. Uh, Olaf Hellman. Um, <laughs> uh, not, not enough time to expand on that. I'll just keep that there. Uh, Olaf Hellman uh, has, uh, has also um, said that they plan to double the step goal. Uh, which is a, a very impressive thing to do. And uh, Brian said, what is this raising money for? Uh, it's uh, it, it's to help you when the bullying gets too much, Brian. So uh, addition, in addition to all the other anonymous people that uh, that donated, uh, we want to say thanks to everybody uh, who, who supported the campaign. Uh, we think it's really important, and also we've enjoyed doing it. It's not too late if you want to get involved. Also, last week we left out Tom Stryker's message. So this week uh, it's the least that we can do to read it out just because uh, it's omotenashi. By which I mean the message Very was good. just omotenashi. <laughs> uh, so, uh, with that, shall we jump into the news? Bobby Judo, what's in the news this week? Japan can expect to see a brand spanking new prime minister take office on October 4th, coming up real soon. And that'll be followed by a general election in November. Derek, why are we here? How are, why are we seeing the prime minister step down just before a general election? Basically, his popularity was really low. And a lot of that was, of course, tied up with how it's perceived the government responded to COVID and some other things, but mostly that. And so Suga, the prime minister currently, uh, I think made a decision that he should step down and let the party elect a new leader so that they go into the general election with a new face on their posters. It seems like just weeks ago that we did a Suga special with you and nemesis of the show, Jake Edelstein. Can you remind the listeners what we were predicting back then? Yeah, actually, I, I think I predicted that he might last two, three years. So I stand corrected. But um, I think we thought it would be more of a stable, long-term prime ministership, and yet, here we are. Well, it has been an unprecedented time. I mean, the, the corona pandemic and the way the government handled it, I don't think any 
citizenry of any country in the world is 100% happy with how their government has handled the pandemic. But there was just so much that the Japanese public had took issue with in the way in which the vaccine rollout was handled and in the way in which the entry restriction policies were handled and all, all manner of things that kind of really damaged the reputation of Suga and by proxy, the LDP. So this doesn't seem to be Suga resigning uh, in, a, in a flit of accountability. This seems to be LDP party preservation because th this system is quite similar to the UK, right? That the, the, the prime minister isn't directly elected uh, like in some other countries. So is this just a bit of kind of political posturing? Yeah, I would say maybe, you know, two parts political posturing, one and a half parts Suga taking responsibility for not being popular. Well, you know, it's, well, it's somewhere in between. If you listen to the man himself, I mean, he made it clear that he's stepping down so that he can prioritize the coronavirus pandemic, which makes sense to me because um, uh, I've been prioritizing my marriage by making a Tinder bio. That's <laughs> 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 how we do things, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I think a big, a big part of it is that... Um, he sees the writing on the wall in terms of his popularity not, you know, restoring. And, um, you know, again, the Japanese public is probably about one-fifth as angry as the public living in Japan from overseas, which means that they are pissed. So, in yeah. the American sense. Yeah, yeah. So, there you go. So, before we talk about the candidates for the next prime minister, which are obviously going to be chosen by the LDP... Is there anything that can be said for Suga's record that the LDP are looking to continue in a new candidate? Oh, I think that his um, carbon reduction goals were pretty well um, received. He kind of he actually made some some surprising strides in terms of environmental goals and some other you know things like that. But in the end, I mean, there's nothing really but COVID. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. in terms of carbon reduction, I mean, he did drastically reduce the amounts of uh, CO2 that prime ministers typically output by responding to questions at press conferences. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. But unfortunately, he did promote uh, Konotaro, which produced an equivalent amount of hot air. Exactly. So, so the greenhouse effect. Uh, yeah. Sh should we talk about Konotaro first, or should we go through the other candidates which aren't going to win first? Well, let's let's start with uh, <laughs> let's start with the unprecedented uh, historical first. We have two female candidates in the running for a uh, prime minister of Japan, which has never happened before. There you go, Derek. What can you tell us about uh, Noda Seiko, who actually was in consideration? Her name came up uh, last time when Suga took over for Abe. Yeah, she's a bit of a perennial candidate. Um, I think this isn't her even second time. I, I want to say she's run before that even. So she's always around in these contests, even if only as kind of, I don't want to say window dressing, but, you know, the party doesn't mind having her as a candidate in their internal elections because it looks better than not having. Yeah. You know, she's from Fukuoka. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was born in Kitakushi. Huh. There was some, uh, wait, wait a minute, Kitakushi is not Fukuoka. Yeah, it's uh, a different it's island. Fukuoka. There's a... Yeah, no, it's a different island. There's a there's a huge rivalry. Okay. Uh, like <laughs> Kita Kyushu people would be very insulted to hear you say they were from Fukuoka, which is 100 percent accurate. <laughs> but it's Fukuoka Ken. You're right. It's what. Yeah. I'm not saying she's from Fukuoka. Well, it's like it's like my wife's from Karatsu, and she'll never say she's from Saga, even though Karatsu is in Saga. Uh, it's Kita Kyushu people would never say they're from Fukuoka, I, even I though come they down are. The side of Kita Kyushu. Yeah. I, I now regret bringing up that <laughs> trivia because I now sound like I don't know anything. <laughs> It's right that you show off with knowledge and come out, come out looking like you don't know. Let me that. tell you. Let me tell you about Noda Seiko, okay? Okay. Um, she is never going to lead the LDP. There's just zero chance of it. Why is that? Because she's kind of like Koike Yuriko, uh, who's no longer a part of the LDP, but she's Tokyo governor now. Mm -hmm. Um, she's a longtime member of the LDP who has participated in a variety of you know, not super LDP-ish movements and things like that. She's kind of in the LDP because they're a big tent party for a lot of different types of politicians, but there's no way in hell that she's going to be elected its leader. Hmm. So it's really, um, it's really not a, a lot of, I don't know, she, she doesn't merit a ton of discussion just because her presence is 
probably in this occasion um, calculated to take away votes from Cohen Altar. Right. Well, last time we, we mentioned her on the show, uh, the idea of the, the glass cliff came up. Not the glass ceiling, but the glass cliff where you mm. elect a woman or you put a woman into a position of power in a situation where they're guaranteed to fail because it was mm. coming on the heels of uh, Abe resigning for health issues and leaving this kind of big, huge mess in the face of the pandemic that nobody was going to do a good job with. And here we, we've kind of gotten away from that where now i mean you you are not guaranteed to fail in fact you're in a situation where you're probably just going to get better from here i mean the the people the vaccination rates are going up you're going to be leading a recovery government and not a crisis government there's no plans for another olympics <laughs> <laughs> no exactly uh everybody and, and whoever whoever gets this um part is probably going to last a couple years just because of the recovery boosting them yeah to be frank okay so not her then what about the other female candidate that's been put there as sakura well actually uh, takaichi sanae is a bit more substantial in this election just because she has the back the backing of former prime minister abe i have heard her described as more abe than abe yeah i mean she plays up the um the abe-ness for sure she's a hardline conservative and nationalist um very opposed to being apologetic for japan's wartime history um she's a regular visitor to yasukuni jinja which is the shrine in tokyo that uh enshrines some people that other countries consider war criminals um and she also is like is very uh regressive in terms of her gender policies or her um isn't she the one who went on and on about the law that requires married couples to share a surname, which is just one of one of these policies, which is like all conservative optics. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Doesn't actually no one actually gets annoyed by what someone's called. That is her. And you've gotten actually right at the root of what her candidacy is about. Um, you know, people people characterize Abe and, and then um, Takaichi as really conservatives and really for all of these um very conservative you know kind of red meat if you if you take the u.s sort of a, a lens red red meat type viewpoints but the fact is abe and she and a lot of others they're getting a lot more from their conservative support than they're giving to their conservative support in terms of policy and actual results so there's a lot of grain of salt to be taken there about what she really means and doesn't. She's just saying all the right things for them, for mm -hmm, their support. Right. What is interesting is that she, I think she has made quite a bit of foreign press. That you know, pe people do see her as a as a plausible candidate, if not a front runner. Yeah, I mean, she's she's viable the second Abe says he supports her, mm -hmm. because yeah. you know, um, you know. First, second, or third term members of the lower house, and the lower house is what elects the prime minister, almost half of the lower house of LDP members are first, second, or third termers. They've all run only in elections with Abe to this point. So when Abe says, I support Takaichi, what that means to them is this guy who got you all into office thinks you should vote for this person right, right. as your leader. That's a that's a huge deal. Right. I'm I'm curious about this idea that um, they pay lip service to conservatives and aren't actually enacting conservative policies. Can you be a little bit more specific about that? Well, I mean, um, the biggest issue that's always been on the table. It's almost like the U.S. Um, we will eventually outlaw abortion for you, conservatives. Sort of uh, stance. In this case, it's we will revise the Constitution. Th there's an interesting parallel that you've made between the uh, the anti-abortionists and the constitutional uh, revisionists in in Japan. That something that uh, surprises me about the uh, the the, the anti-abortion movement is they never have an answer to the question. Then what? Okay, so women don't have an abortion. Now, what's your plan with the baby? And like that's that's where their their intellectual curiosity stops. Like, no, right. it's alive. That's what Jesus would have wanted. You know, whatever. <laughs> I love you characterized that as intellectual curiosity. <laughs> well, it's it's we we are pro life until you're yeah, born. And yeah, then, yeah. Then fuck off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and it's the same for the, the these hard right Japanese who want to revise the constitution because once they've said we want military power, which is but like revising the constitution is basically that, right? It's it's saying it's a euphemism for saying Japan's not going to be pacifist anymore. They then never have a question to th what next. They never outwardly say, "Then we're going to go fuck China up." Like, they, <laughs> right. they, 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 they never, they never have the next move of now what a militarized Japan is going to be. Well, the funny thing is, the the funny thing is, the current state will now be legal. Is what that means. <laughs> Japan, right. who's, yeah, Japan, yeah, which yeah, exactly. spends whatever year it is, uh, depending on the year. Uh, you know, Japan, which spends the third or second most uh, of any country as percentage of GDP on military already. We'll finally be able yeah. to say our military is legal to have under our constitution. Mm. <laughs> that, that's going to be the big yeah. accomplishment of revising the constitution. They, they might as well. They might as well say. They might. They might as well say. Yeah. Now formally, we're going to say that Pachinko was always gambling. <laughs> right. uh, exactly. <laughs> do you think that if they could accomplish it, it's something that they would want to accomplish? I do think they want to accomplish it. I do. I do think that people who want to revise um, the Japanese constitution truly do. Uh, want to revise it people who in other words run on it and make it one of their big you know ultimate goals they do want to do it it's just that kind of thing where say you tweet a random thought you had on twitter let's say since we're all you know since we since we all do that by twitter yeah. um you read you tweet a random thing and you don't expect any response and then people just go nuts about it and you're like whoa this really struck a nerve and i had no idea it was going to do that you're going to do that again, probably. If you're going for the likes, if you're going for the retweets, you're going to go for that again, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, And mm. it's kind of a similar thing, in my opinion. They would like to revise the Constitution, by all means. And then when they say they do, and they, it's, it's, you know, it's on TV, yeah. wow, don't the donations come rolling in? It's positive reinforcement. It's, mm. yeah, it's, yeah. well, yeah, I do want this, and now I want it even more. Yeah, and now, and now, wait, I can make a job of wanting this? Yeah. You know, like... It's a it's a huge um, you know the Skinner box psychology um, experiment where you know they basically positively reinforce or negatively you know uh, reinforce the behavior they do or don't want and it just can you can control people into a really yeah, you know, yeah. narrow set of, of behaviors and I think that it's it's a similar thing that's the one where where they could like create superstitions in pigeons right. Like they could reward yeah. a random behavior <laughs> yeah. in pigeons and then the pigeon would learn that like every time it did that random thing, something good would happen to it. <laughs> right. It's, it's it's very Pavlovian or whatever you want to <laughs> call it. Where these, you know, these folks over the last you know few decades, um, I mean, the LDP was founded on the um, desire to revise the constitution mm. and make, a, make Japan what they call a normal country. And if they are going to have a big military, there is an argument, I think, to be made that, hey, maybe it shouldn't be... Um, it's constitutionally uh, prohibited. Yeah. <laughs> but in the end, right. I don't think they're getting um, the results for these support groups that the support groups, you know, ultimately are looking yeah. for. Yeah. Uh, question for Ali, along with a little piece of fun trivia here. What does it mean that Takaichi, uh, the second female candidate for prime minister, is a huge fan of Margaret Thatcher? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's probably a bad thing. Uh, <laughs> Margaret Thatcher. Well, I mean, look, it's a good thing. Margaret Thatcher was the first female prime minister, so she, you know, she, she is progressive in that sense in another more specific sense uh she caused a lot of uh, a lot of economic uh, despair uh for that, that is still lasted the, the the damage that she's done is uniquely intergenerational yeah. in yeah. economic terms wow. but then again maybe she doesn't know much about her in much the same way that like you know Bobby, you and i don't know much about these japanese politicians we're just going by what they've tweeted maybe she's just seen a poster of her and she, she kind of looks cool and authoritative yeah i would say overall that actually the japanese public i think from what i've seen anyway seems to have a positive image of margaret thatcher so for her to say that is it plays well with the japanese public yeah sure okay fine because 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 margaret thatcher is associated with the glory days of the bubble era just like ron reagan of course oh, yeah, of yeah, course. yeah yeah i was i yeah, was yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah. like margaret yeah. thatcher is kind of like you know the uk's reagan in terms of not only the damage wreaked by their economic policies but also by the fact that like the way they're viewed abroad is just based on their public persona and not their actual policies and also margaret thatcher played a, a great cowboy we've got two more people to talk about uh, which is Kishida Fumio and Kono Taro. So before we talk about the winner, Kono Taro, <laughs> yes, we are yes we are recording this in September. Uh, from what I understand uh, about Fumio, is he was kind of ousted by Suga, in that he was someone that was kind of pretty cozy with Abe, 
And then when Suga chose his cabinet, didn't pick him. Am I right in that? Uh, I wouldn't characterize their their relationship exactly that way. Um, there's a there's a lot of complex um, multi directional relationships between people like Kishida and Suga and Abe and Nikai and these other LDP figures. But what I would say about Kishida is that in recent years, he's been posturing for a long time to try and become LDP leader, even back when Abe was in his most recent term mm. as the LDP right. leader. And so he's been not completely on board with Abe-ism, as it were. And from that perspective, he's you know he's tried to cut his own path. And so I would say that He's he's the one who's maybe the most prepared for this election internally. The big thing that he gets attention for in the Japanese domestic media is um is uh what is it hibaku, like being anti nuclear weapons. Right. Well, like Datsu. Well, yeah. I mean, there's some of that. Here's the thing about him. His um his constituency is uh you know down in Hiroshima, and so. He's gonna ha- have to play that, you know, that role as right. anti-nuclear because Hiroshima, obviously. Um, the other thing about him, though, is he's always been a little bit softer. He's been a little bit more of a dove on um, China relations. He was a very soft-spoken, and some people thought a little bit too soft of a foreign minister. Uh, and overall, uh, he's not sexy, but I actually think he'll he has the best chance of winning. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, do you? I do. Despite the fact that he's not that hot on a kendama. <laughs> no, uh, exactly. Exactly. Um, I, you know why? Uh, because the internal LDP view... Well, I don't want to get into Kono Taro yet. If you want to, if you want to save it for him. We but, can, oh, we we can transition but, here. Yeah. But let's, but, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, let, 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 let's conclude the episode with, with the, uh, the other arch nemesis of yeah. this podcast. Well, let me tell you a little bit. Let me get let me get a little bit more about Kishida, and you can cut it if you want. But um, here's the thing about Kishida: is he is seen as the most stable, the most known quantity, and the most likely to run things in a way that the Diet members who will be voting would like to see the party run. Hmm. So Kishida right. has a huge um, advantage in that sense. And he's been, you know, working to con- uh, what put together support for the last several years. So he is no, he is no pushover. And he's a known quantity, which makes him diametrically opposed to the last member of our list, the super maverick, the straight talking, sharp shooting maverick who's shaking up the system. <laughs> Kono, Taro Kono. So here's the thing about Kono Taro. He is. Popular with the public, as you know. My wife likes him. Um, folks like him generally. Generally, folks have, I think, an overall positive impression. And this is, I'm sorry, excluding the... Um, the G folks. Non, <laughs> s- non-citizen non community of Japan. Um, they generally seem to have a really negative view of Kono Taro. However, the Japanese public, which uh, are the ones, as far as I know, that have voting rights, they tend to like him overall. <laughs> So, um, yeah. you know, that's how people are going to calculate the it. The Japanese public also does raise the issue of him being a public official blocking people on Twitter. Uh, but we've discussed yeah, that they, they do, issue too. enough on this podcast in, in all different kinds of ways. <laughs> Let's talk about, like, right, his actual right. efficacy as a politician. Would we say overall that he's been successful with his, his rollout as vaccine minister? I think that the Japanese public generally view him as having done as good a job as anybody could have done. Mm. The Japanese public, I think, have a an awareness, and I think that it has a certain correctness to it, that in any instance, the various bureaucracies and the various municipalities who administered the vaccine rollout were going to cause some slowness and delays and red tape. Right. And anybody right. but Konotaro would have been probably less effective at breaking through some of that red tape. And he, he does seem reform-minded. Okay. He talks about ending nuclear power, uh, or he used to anyway. Um, before he was in this election. Before he yeah. was in this yeah. election. Uh, <laughs> he's backtracked on that a little bit. But also um, a very controversial position of allowing women to ascend to the imperial throne 
he's in favor of that. Yeah, and Japanese public don't care that much about that, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Just my just my opinion. Right. Here's the thing about Kono Taro that is putting him at a disadvantage in this election. And a lot of people don't talk about this, but the people who actually vote in this election for LDP leader are generally the Diet members. The Diet members see Kono Taro as not stable enough and not as good at dealing with the bureaucracies enough to be prime minister. Hmm. And that's a huge right. knock against him with those people who are voting. Okay. So if your goal was to end the LDP's long reign, which of the two candidates should you should you be back in? Wait, what? <laughs> who who would be the be- who would be a better candidate to fail horribly and who's the best Trojan horse? Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, there. Are, in my opinion, it might be Takaichi because Takaichi worries the hell out of the business community. They are so worried she'll become prime minister and really piss off China. The business community has a ton of business in China, so you know your your LDP is generally seen as business friendly party. And when somebody starts pissing off China, that's where they tend tend to draw the line and say, "Okay, yeah, we don't want to support that because we need to go out and make our money." Yeah, yeah, we're xenophobic, but not them. They got money. <laughs> Hey, thanks very much for listening to this episode 101 of Japan by River Cruise. If you like what we do, then we have a Buy Me A Coffee page where we humbly accept your donations to support the show. Thank you to everyone that does Some that. of that money will go to our graphics guy and our video editor, Lukman Hardy, who uh, we've got to give a shout out to this week because he did an amazing job making a video version of our advertisement last week, which was the trailer for it's very the funny. Konotaro movie, The Boss Baby. Uh <laughs> <laughs> He did such a great check job. Check it out on Bobby's YouTube page. He, he, yeah, it's on my YouTube page. It's also on our Twitter. You can check it out. Uh, thanks to our guest this week, Derek Westman. Derek, you got anything you'd like to plug uh, other than the LDP? <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> I'm not an LDP stooge, I swear. Um, I would like to plug Unsung Moss. Everybody go outside. Look at the moss around you. It's beautiful. <laughs> You can catch a, a view of the moss on some of the river banks that you can find on uh, Japanese river cruises. We'll see you next week. <laughs>